If you've ever ridden public transport, you're probably familiar with some form of this, a public transport diagram. Some are simple, like this one of the metro system in Dnipro, Ukraine, while other ones are less simple, like the map of the Shanghai metro. Public transportation wayfinding comes in all shapes and sizes, and in this video, we'll take a look at this iconic part of public transport systems around the world. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing, it's free and it helps out a ton. Thanks and on to the video. First, we need to establish the difference between a map and a diagram. This is a public transport map. It accurately portrays the environment and the transit lines are drawn onto scale. This is a public transport diagram, more accurately, the Shanghai Metro diagram. The landscape is not portrayed accurately and to scale, because that's not the point. The point of these diagrams is to provide easy to read, clear wayfinding for every passenger. The Prague Metro in vehicle diagram is a good example. It's simple to read, but totally inaccurate to how the network looks in reality. Now that we've got that out of the way, Let's get back to the history of transit wayfinding. Early public transport wayfinding was done primarily by maps, instead of diagrams. We don't know exactly when the first public transport map was drawn up. My uneducated guess would probably be around the time the first omnibus lines were set up, back in the early to mid 19th century. After all, people needed to know where they were going. As public transport grew and new modes of transport, such as trains, trams and subways were introduced, more maps were made. For example, this is a map of proposed lines in San Joaquin County, California, from the year 1910. As you can see, the map accurately depicts the landscape, with the proposed lines drawn onto scale. As public transport grew more extensive, and by extension, complicated, maps adopted new practices, such as color coding individual lines. The real breakthrough came in 1931. This beautiful gentleman is Harry Beck. After allegedly being inspired by the work of the London and Northeastern Railway and George Dow, Beck decided to draw a diagram of the London Underground. The result was this, a colorful diagram of the numerous underground lines in London. Almost all of the terrain detail was cut, except for the Thames River, and most curves were smoothed out or outright replaced by straight lines. Emphasis was placed on making as many turns as close to 45 or 90 degree angles. Distances are also distorted, especially around the edges of the network. For example, look at this section of the Metropolitan Line. The two farthest away stations from the center, Watford and Croxley Green, now only known as Croxley, look quite close together, but in reality, they are 2.09 kilometers or 1.3 miles apart. In comparison, Post Office, now known as St. Paul's, and Chancery Line on the Central Line are only 1 kilometer or 0.6 miles apart, even though they're a similar distance away on the diagram to the aforementioned stations. Beck saw complete accuracy as irrelevant, as in his opinion, people just want to know how to get to where they want to go. Most people don't concern themselves with finding out if the river is drawn on to scale. Beck submitted his work in 1931, but due to the radical design shift from the previous map, it was rejected. He didn't give up though, and after submitting again, his design was approved and printed in 1933. After his work was published, it became an instant hit, and many public transport systems imitated the design for their own wayfinding. The work of Harry Beck has left a noticeable impact on our current public transport diagrams, almost 100 years after his London Underground diagram was published. For example, this is the Prague Metro and Tram diagram. The omission of most terrain features and the use of straight lines, 45 degree and 90 degree angles is clearly visible. Unlike London, Prague's diagram features some landmarks and city districts are labeled. Now that you've got your degree in public transport map history, let's check out how public transport wayfinding works in modern times. Modern public transport wayfinding comes in all shapes and sizes. First, I'd like to take a look at Prague, Czech Republic's wayfinding. This is the most well-known public transport diagram in Prague, the Metro and Tram diagram. This is printed in every metro car, and so, every metro passenger has access to this diagram. As previously mentioned, it's clearly inspired by the work of Harry Beck. 
Above the doors of every metro train car, there is a smaller, wider version of the metro diagram, this time without trams. This diagram is very simple to read, but again, extremely distorted, especially the sea line, which had to be flipped 90 degrees. One neat feature of these diagrams is that they show which stations are wheelchair accessible with these little wheelchair pictograms. They also show stations with parking rights and stations with connections to the train network. Now, diagrams aside, there are more elements of metro wayfinding. For example, these signs. These mark the entrance to a metro station. Right now, they are colored in the color of the line they serve, with the Prague Metro logo and the name of the station. There are also these white and orange signs that are used to mark station exits, the direction of the exit, what modes of transit you can connect to, and where those exits lead. For example, this sign shows that the exit is straight ahead, you can connect to trams, and that after emerging from the exit, you will find yourself on Magdalena Retigua Street. You can take a tram from Lazarska Street, and you can get to the Charles University Faculty of Education. The wayfinding doesn't end there. On the platforms, there are these massive boards showing all the stations on a line, the transfer stations, and which lines you can transfer to. This sign also shows wheelchair accessible stations, the combined train stations, and which track you have to board from to get to your desired location. There are also additional signs to show which track you want to go from. These show the direction and the terminus station of each track. On the surface, there are these large boards marking a station and the line it serves. Apart from the metro, there are also buses, trams, suburban trains, ferries and the Petrin funicular. Bus and tram stops take on the form of this red stand with either a tram or bus pictogram, with the shelter usually attached to it. Suburban train stations are marked by this logo of a white S inside a blue two-toned circle. The three funicular stations in the city are marked by this pictogram. And last, ferry stops are marked by this red stand with a boat pictogram on the top. However, Prague public transport wayfinding isn't perfect, it has its issues. For example, the lack of unification between transport modes. Here is an information board in the Prague main train station. It has a completely different design from the other signs elsewhere in the city. The text is written in Czech, English and German, and some of the pictograms don't make sense sometimes. For example, this one looking like a cathedral. According to the official guide, it should signify the Prague main train station. More accurately, its historical building. In Prague, there are many other buildings that look like that, so tourists could easily mistake it as a route to the historical center, for example. Personally, I would replace it with a sign reading Historical Train Station Building or something like that. Work is being done to unify public transport wayfinding in the city. Just a few years ago, a redesign and unification of all public transport wayfinding was approved. As of January 2024, the new design was implemented in the Palmovka, Jiřího Spoděbrat and Chodov metro stations, and here it is. The biggest difference is that the color was unified to black. Previously, different wayfinding elements had different colors. These colors ranged from white, to red, to yellow, to green. The large signs on the platforms underwent big changes as well. The station circles were shrunk down and the wheelchair pictogram was replaced by these minuses, which indicate a non-wheelchair accessible station. The transfer station signs were changed as well, as well as the combined train station signs. The station exit signs were changed too. The lines between the individual destinations were removed and it gives off a more minimalist vibe. The metro station signs on the outside were changed as well. This can be seen around the Karlovo Namiesti station. The new sign looks like this, a black cube with a small color strip on the left signifying the line the station serves and the Prague Metro logo in white. Many bus and tram stop shelters were updated as well. They look like this, with a black background and white text. LED lights are also integrated into the structure. However, the biggest changes happen to the in-vehicle diagrams. Harry Beck's 45 and 90 degree turns were toned down and the diagram took on a more minimalist design. The white above door diagrams were minimalized as well and the transfer triangle in the middle of the network got more curved in this design. Overall, I have mixed feelings on the redesign. 
I think it looks sleeker and cleaner, but some sections are less legible in my opinion, such as the wheelchair accessibility of different metro stations. However, I applaud the effort to unify Prague public transport wayfinding. Here are some modifications I'd make to the new design. For this segment, I consulted a good friend of mine who studies graphic design. His Instagram page is in the description, go check him out. I will translate his messages from Czech to English, but if you want to see his opinions in Czech, I will include them in the source file, also in the description. First, I will change the accessibility signs in the metro. On the new diagram, wheelchair accessibility is marked by this minus sign, which signifies that the station isn't accessible. This has to be explained by a little guide in the top left corner. In our combined opinion, diagrams should have as few unclear elements like this as possible. Diagrams should be easily readable. So, concerning the change, I would bring back the wheelchair pictograms. Next, I would unify the languages the signs are written in. I would probably be for the adoption of the language scheme that the main train station uses, so Czech, English and German, in that order. Besides these, I like the new design. I like how clean it looks and I like the black color more than the white one. Next, I'd like to take a look at Germany's public transport wayfinding. Notice how I said Germany and not one city like Berlin. Unlike the previously mentioned Czech Republic, where each city has its own designs, Germany's public transport wayfinding is more or less unified across the whole country. For example, U-Bahn stations, the country's equivalent to subway stations, are all marked by this logo, a white U on a blue background. S-Bahn stations, the country's equivalent to suburban slash commuter rail, are all marked by this white S sign in a green circle. And last, bus stops are all marked by this green H sign inside a multicolored circle. The public transport diagrams of individual cities differ a bit, but they all share certain similarities, such as most turns being 45 or 90 degree angles. One more place I'd like to mention is Tokyo, Japan. I applaud the people running Tokyo Public Transport for making their system foreigner friendly. All signs are typed not only in Japanese, but also in English, in the Latin script. In my opinion, the best feature for foreigners is this, the labeling of each station with a letter and numbers. Most visitors probably won't remember the station names, but will probably remember something along the lines of, OK, I have to get to station H06. One nice thing about this system is that the number goes up over time. If you travel three stations in one direction, the number will increase by three. If you go three stations in the opposite direction, the number will decrease by three. No confusion here. As for the diagram itself, it's clearly inspired by Beck's London Underground diagram, with the omission of most terrain detail and the 45 and 90 degree turns. In conclusion, public transport wayfinding is an art form, one that different regions tackle in different ways. Thank you for watching to the end, you're a real star. Let me know if this video wasn't too exhausting or too long to watch. Please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. Enjoy the bloopers, this has been Tramley and I'll see you next time. Bye. Some are simple, like this one of the metro system on- <sighs> After all, people needed to know where- <sighs> Maps adopted new practices. <laughs> One neat feature of these diagrams is that they show which stations are which... <coughs> On the old map, every wheelchair accessible station has a small wheelchair... <coughs> Speaking English is hard.